Sandman. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Chinchero. My name is Yvette. And now I want to show you all the process about our weaving. Um, here in Chinchero, we use two kinds of wool. You can touch the difference. You can see it. Yeah, the unpacker is softer, very, very softer than the skin. Alpaca wool, we can get different quality. Alpaca baby is the high, high quality. And the alpaca agus or just alpaca is deeper. Which is alpaca? This is alpaca. Yes. Okay. Deeper. Of course, picuña mm -hmm. is the high quality than uh, sheep and alpaca, but we don't work with vicuña uh, wool because it's protected by government. And then um, the first step is to wash the wool. And to wash, we use this root, like shampoo or detergent. This root, the name of this root is Sakta or Sacha Parakai. It's like shampoo or detergent. To get this root, we have to walk around two or three hours from here. We can get it uh, on the mountains. Besides to wash the wool, we, we use like shampoo for our hair. It's very good to prevent the white hair. Somebody have? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's too late. <laughs> because we have to use uh, before. This is just to prevent. <laughs> We use hot water because, uh, look at this, the wool is very dirty and grass because never take a shower the alpaca or uh, <laughs> sheep. This is the first uh, shower. We use the, this root to keep the quality of the wool. Now she's making the skinning. This activity we can make walking, dancing, running on the street because we are very expert. Sometimes we carry a baby on the back and the same time we make this activity. If she broke, she can join without any problem. <laughs> In this activity, is playing just the finger of the hand. She is making one thread. Also, she can make this activity when she gives a kiss to her husband. She is very expert. <laughs> At all things. The next step is the tying process. We obtain all of the 
is colored with different plants. For example, this is uh, Kiko to get the yellow color. This is Cheche to get the blue color. This is a uh, purple color to get uh, purple. This is Oye. This is Oye flower to get another yellow color. This is Chilta leaves to get the green color, different tonalities. Uh, Besides to dye in with this plant, with the Chilta leaves, we use like medicinal plant. It's very good for our bone. After to play in soccer. Mm -hmm. Now. <laughs> This is the cacazunca to get the orange color. Also the palo palo to get this color. And the most interesting maybe is the cochinilla. Cochinilla is an insect, it grown on the cactus. Like is this one, it's growing on the cactus. Look at this. Sí. <laughs> to get different tonalities, sometimes we use uh, lemon lemon juice. We get this to change another tonality. Uh, now I want to show you a demonstration with cochinilla. Look at, first we have to join the cochinilla and then we have to dry and then we have to pound it. This is the cochinilla. A little of cochinilla. This is just a demonstration. Because to fix the color, we have to boil it around 30, 40 minutes, one hour, one hour and a half, depending what color and what tonality we want to get. <laughs> Look at this. Sometimes we use uh, salt, salt from Maras, Moray. And sometimes we use the alum stone, piedra alumbre. to join two threads, mm -hmm. to be stronger. Mm -hmm. Also, <laughs> also the, this activity we can make walking, running, dancing, with kissing. Carry. Yes, kissing. But the difference, uh, but the difference, the first spinning was with the finger, but this is with the palm of the finger. Sometimes we carry a baby, sometimes we carry some things because we use the 
square blanket like backpack and we use this uh, to to make the, um, our our weed. Do you have any idea what is it? A tourist who did not buy something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a job. <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> this is a tourist bond who didn't buy anything. <laughs> no, this is just a job. Okay, we're now exploring the Inca aspect of the town of Chin uh, Chinchero. And obviously this town dates back to Inca times, as we can see from this polygonal Inca construction. This is an original Inca wall and the stones fit relatively tightly together. And as we continue along, again, uh, there you can see the mountains of Salkantai, which are part of the Andes system. And again, the lower section of this wall is from the Inca time period. And as we walk up towards the main square, you see this channel in the middle of the staircase. That's another Inca invention, a way to collect rainwater to be sent down to the agricultural areas. So the Inca were water movement specialists. And here is our first anomaly. This uh, was likely a serpent pattern. Notice that the surfaces are incredibly flat and the grooves almost appear as if they were done with a router. So these are ancient stones that were found at Chinchero or nearby and later recycled into a colonial Spanish building. Yeah, this is megalithic on the bottom, bottom half, upper half Inca. And now we're going to be exploring more of Chinchero. Notice the large megalithic blocks on the left there, and these basalt stairs that were likely recycled from an older structure because the only basalt quarry I know of is at least 50 miles away if not more, from this location. So again, more large basalt slabs put on top of a wall, clearly recycled from somewhere else because it's far superior to the Inca construction that we can see. And then even this, um, this pedestal or platform that has crosses on it, if you look carefully at these blocks, they were obviously cut uh, from the quarry, uh, relatively badly deteriorated now, but they have these interesting glyph-like designs that so far no one has been able to decode. And then as we continue, uh, again you see the rather large basalt blocks there, and as we descend down, uh, the Inca water channel and then an Inca polygonal wall that has undergone some repair. And you see how the clay was used in between some of the stones in its construction. And then finally, we're going up an Inca staircase More poly, uh, polygonal work there. And as we look at the front of the church, you'll see that it's a mix in terms of construction technique. Again, the basalt blocks. And interesting, this corner, which is, uh, is polygonal, could very well be megalithic and not Inca because the stones fit perfectly together. <clears throat> it simply shows the complexity of constructions in the highlands of Peru. Now these are 2019 tours with us. Megalithic India in January of 2019. 
megalithic Mexico in February of 2019. Exploring Petra and the Dead Sea in Jordan in April after our Egypt tour. And then also Lebanon, we're going to Baalbek and Byblos after the Egypt and Jordan tours. Our annual Inti Raimi Inca celebration in June, celebrating the solstice. Then we're going to Turkey in September of 2019, including, of course, Gobekli Tepe. And all of Peru and Bolivia in November of 2019. And these are uh, new books for 2018 that I've written. The Complete DNA Study of the Elongated Skull Paractus People of Peru. Lost Ancient Technology of Egypt, Volume 2, including the Osiris Shaft. Lost Ancient Technology of Peru and Bolivia, Volume 2. Some sites you may not have heard of, like this one. Children of the Pharaohs, A Brief History of the Copts of Egypt, who are the descendants of the dynastic people. Lost Ancient Technology of Mexico. Some amazing sites, including many you haven't heard of. Pumapunku and Tiwanaku, possibly the strangest ancient site on Earth. I think so. And Baalbek, Lebanon, Megaliths of the Gods, not just the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, but the whole site.